we've seen people fleeing uh, those leftist policies and moving to states like Florida, Georgia, Texas, um, you know, states where they they like the tax policies, they they like the schools, they li- they like the consequences of Republican and red policies. Um, what I think would be something that some red states could propose is well, okay, if. If Democrat voters uh, choose to flee these blue states where they cannot tolerate the living conditions, they don't want their children taught these horrible things, and they really change their mind on the types of policies that they support, well, once they move to a red state, guess what? Maybe you don't get to vote for five years. You can live there, you can work there, but you don't get to bring your values that you that you basically created in the blue states you came from by voting for Democrat leaders and Democrat policies. Fresh off her widely criticized tweet calling for a so-called national divorce between red states and blue states, Marjorie Green is now proposing a temporary voting ban on self-identifying Democrats who move out of so-called blue states to red states. Let's hear a little bit more from what she has to say. And I'm gonna show you a map of the United States, a map that apparently Marjorie Green is unfamiliar with. Let's watch. What does a national divorce look like in your, in your estimation? Well, a national divorce is not a civil war. It's actually separating by red states and blue states um, and making state rights and state power a lot stronger than it is right now. Um, It would be shrinking the federal government. For example, we can take education. Well, if we have a national divorce, there's no need for the Department of Education. Red states and blue states would be in control of the education in each state. Red states would very likely um, have traditional education, homeschooling, uh, charter schools, private schools, technical schools. They would not allow any type of gender lies being taught in their schools. LGBTQ woke teachers would be fired and not allowed to teach there. Um, they would allow parents to be able to choose the curriculum uh, instead of school boards that, that don't respect parents' beliefs and traditional family values. Um, and it may be in blue states, they would have full gender transition schools for their students. I don't know what they would do, but I'm sure their education do would you- look different than ours. This is what culture war brain rot looks like. Cenk, what happened during the Civil War? What was the Civil War about? Well, we kind of split up into northern states and southern states, kind of like red and blue. And then the the southern states wanted more state power. Mm, So like a national divorce kind of situation. Exactly what Mm. she described. Interesting, yeah. Okay, I mean, it's stunning how ignorant she is. In the red states, do they teach history at all? Do they teach civics at all? Now look, ironically, as you guys know, probably if you watched yesterday, she's from a blue state. So she doesn't even know what state she's in. Georgia voted for Biden and Obama twice and has two Democratic senators, etc. She's so incredibly ignorant, but that's exactly what happened during the Civil War. Let's take a look at this map of the United States. As you can tell, you can see the red depicting the red voters or the Republican voters and the blue depicting the Democratic voters. There's a lot of mixing going on, Cenk, mm-hmm. right? So how yeah. do you determine how this national divorce happens? And by the way, let's just address the fact that she is telling the American people that if you have one political identity and you move to a state that she has determined is a so-called red state, well, your rights to vote should be taken away from you for five years, why? Yeah. I mean, how ridiculous is that? So, okay, so if you're a Republican and you move to California, should your voting rights be banned? I would never in a million years propose something that disgusting. But this is who they are, right? People like Marjorie Green specifically use culture war issues to get Americans to think of each other as enemies, right? Oh, People living in Florida or Texas are my enemies. They're my enemies based on their views on culture, based on their views on what the right you know, social fabric for this country should be. No, we're Americans, we might have disagreements, but guess what? There are a lot more agreements among Americans regardless of their political affiliation than people like Marjorie Green would have you believe. In fact, let me give you some examples. Sorry, Jane. This this kind of garbage 
really does fire me up because we gotta stop fighting each other as, as ordinary Americans and really look up at people in power who have an interest in dividing and conquering us. So interesting poll that didn't really get much coverage. This was done by YouGov. They looked at voters between January and September of 2022. And here's what they found. 73% of Americans think teachers should get paid more. 61% support policies that would prevent landlords from raising rent. 65% of Americans have an unfavorable view of Mitch McConnell. Here, here to that. 60% of Americans support more spending on public housing. 67% support the government offering medical debt forgiveness. 79% of Americans have favorable views of Social Security. 79% have a favorable view of Medicare. 77% have favorable views of other social spending programs, including disability insurance. You want me to go on? But they don't want us to focus on what we have in common, on how we wanna do something about economic justice in this country or the economic injustice. Justice we've been living under. All we do all day long is talk about whatever manufactured culture war Republicans want to frame the argument with. And I'm sick of it. I'm so sick of it. Yeah, Anyways. well, look, if the elites wanted to do a false flag operation, this is exactly what they would do. They would plant someone like Marjorie Taylor Greene. Now, did they? I don't think they're that smart. No. I think she's an actual person with those actual thoughts. She's but a useful tool. Yeah, but the elites must be thinking, how did we get this lucky? Because Anna's all those numbers are right. The first chapter of my book, Justice is Coming, is poll after poll after poll showing, we all agree, we all agree. Do you know that 59% of Americans say that corporations have too much money and power? I mean, no one on TV thinks that, no one in Washington thinks too much money and power. How much is even too much? I don't know. But 60% of six out of 10 Americans say, no, corporations are so bad, I just don't even want them to have that much money. I mean, which is honestly a position I don't even agree with. It's to the left of me. Six out of 10 Americans are to the left of me, right? Let alone the two thirds and the three quarters that agree with us on every major issue, right? But when you send someone like, Marjorie Taylor Greene in, she's so effective at her job because not only does she get her side riled up and like, oh, we hate gays, don't let him teach, don't let him teach, we hate gays, right? She said it, she said, we fire all the LGBTQ teachers. You can rewind right. the tape. You know what, all right, do it, do it. And I'll, uh, listen, for all of the supporters of Marjorie Greene, I'm trying to be calm and reason with you, okay? I don't think you're necessarily a bad person, I just don't think you maybe have thought about this enough. Okay, all the gay teachers, transgender students, what, uh, they're, they're purged from the school systems across the country. Okay, um, how are you gonna pay your rent or your mortgage? What about your medical bills? What is Marjorie Green and honestly, the entirety of our legislature doing to improve your life right now? Nothing, nothing. So if that is what sustains you, if, if, Hating on others, getting people fired, if that's what feeds you, keeps you nice and warm at night, puts shelter or a roof over your head, great. Except it doesn't, it doesn't. In the end, you're still struggling and you still have lawmakers not representing your best interest, but distracting you with whatever hate that they're instilling in your heart. It's disgusting, don't fall for it. Yeah, well, look, I have trouble not falling for it because I'm not gonna let them fire any gay teachers. Of course yeah, not. I know, and so I'm gonna fight her, right? So, and and uh, and if you wanna talk about education, well, who's the absolute worst? The least woke states, Alabama and Mississippi. They've been led by Republicans for decades on end, and they're miserable in education. They're dead last, because they don't care about education, they care about propaganda. Right, so you're forcing me to fight you because you keep saying, "Oh, those hateful people! I love them so much, and I want all of you guys to they say to have our values." You're not allowed to be gay. You're not allowed to be anything else. We're going to rule over you. Well, what am I going to do? Agree with you on that? No, of course I have to fight her on it. I'm not going to let you. I don't want your life, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Your life looks miserable. I think your values are disgusting. Oh, I, I'm gonna exclude them, and I'm gonna exclude them, and I'm gonna rule over them. Yeah, and then they say these gaslighting garbage, like 
liberals want to control your life. Are you crazy? I don't, I don't care. Want, I don't care about your stupid life, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Leave us alone. Go away. Go into a cave and don't learn anything. And, do, and don't have any gay people around you and don't have any black people around you. You just said yesterday, we showed you a clip about, Oh, I mean, I know some white people that are so bad. They might be as bad as black people. Okay, go into your goddamn cave and do whatever the hell you want there, as long as you're not affecting us. So she forces us to fight back. And when we do, we're right back in the mess. And people don't it's know that over 80% of it's Americans believe in a paid family leave. And the corporations win and they drive you back into your jobs at low pay. She's never fought for you. If you're a right winger, Find me a right winger that fought for you on economic issues, that put food on your table, that took care of your family. No, all they have is hate, 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 own the libs. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna do, destroy their woke culture. Oh, God damn it, gay people, black people, cheap immigrants, oh, they're the problem. No, you idiots, look up, look up. Who do you think has the power, you? And you forced me to say terrible things about you. Who do you think has the power? It's the corporations you, I'm trying to contain myself. Corporate power has taken over all of our government and it's slowly crushing us. We have no economic dignity left. And yet you back people like this who keep attacking us and provoking us into these endless conflicts so that you're endlessly distracted from what you actually want, which is dignity, safety, security, and comfort for your family. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.